All right, welcome to the show, everybody. It is Tuesday, November 15th. A um, little bit of a big day. A little bit of a big day, if I don't say so myself. We have uh, one Donald J. Trump. Donald J., I think the J stands for uh, Germain, is his middle name. Donald Germain Trump. Um, he is announcing his run for president today. So, woo boy. Buckle up. This is going to be so much fun because, um, man... He's at a he's at a low point. He's at a low point, and now is when he's gonna announce. He uh, he doesn't give a fuck about the national mood. He doesn't care about the fact that his candidates got obliterated. Uh, he doesn't care that DeSantis is now the favorite in the polls and among the donors. He's all in, bro. He's all in. But look, that's the same quality that uh, made him formidable in the first place. Is his like go 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 mentality? So. I don't know what's going to happen, but anyway, it'll be fun. I'm sure uh, we'll talk about that when that happens, the uh, the Donald Trump announcement. So anyway, um, man, a lot of stuff to talk about today. So the rats are still fleeing the Trump ship. We're going to talk about that. Um, Candace Owens give this, gives this very long, tortured uh, analysis as to, you know, why, hey, I thought, for the first time, I thought, hey, maybe this Trump guy is like, uh, not all he's cracked up to be. Maybe he's, like, got a really big ego and he's got, like, a really big narcissism problem because he was rude to me. He was rude to me. That's so mean. I don't like that. Poop. Poop face. Um, Mike Lindell melts down. Uh, certain characters on the far right are calling for flat-out dictatorship. They just took the mask off. But look, there's actually good news on that front, too, because the reaction of the Trump candidates has not been like Trump himself. It has not been. Fascinating. Uh, we'll have... Charlemagne says he thinks Democrats are screwed for 2024. Uh, Make some interesting comments on that front. And then, shock, um, I actually agree with Ted Cruz on something. I agree with Ted, a.k.a. Tom Cruz. Uh, we'll talk about that. So anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. I was eating popcorn just before the show. I was having some white cheddar popcorn and... It was probably the worst idea imaginable because this is like the last food that you want to eat when you're about to talk because you got like kernels stuck in the back of your throat and shit and it's just a mess. There's a little dust shit everywhere, but hey man, YOLO. I love you guys, but I also love popcorn, so I might just keep eating it because I don't give a fuck. Anyway, all right, so Candace Owens, um, you know, was one of the hardcore... Trump supporters in conservative media. I mean, there was a while where they all were big Trump supporters. Um, but as Trump the winner now has become Trump the loser for three elections straight, him and or his candidates losing time and time and time again, um, they're kind of fed up. And they're all, some are moving away from him at a thousand miles an hour. Others are tiptoeing away at like two miles an hour. So here's Candace Owens. She's going to give... I love how, like, long and drawn out her shitty uh, segment is here, but she's going to explain when she had this light bulb moment of like, huh, this Trump guy, I'm not so sure about him anymore. This is amazing. Let's watch. Trump actually got upset with me because, and here's the great irony, the richest irony, the Daily Beast ran a headline regarding that live Instagram that you just heard from me. And the headline was, Tr Candace Owens says Trump is pro-vax because he's too old to understand the internet. I never once called Trump too old. I did never once say that Trump could not understand the internet. And yet, somehow, he got... Let me just point out the hilarious fact that every time one of these right-wing goons turns on Trump, it's usually over some shit where Trump was actually right. So I was watching a Tim Pool video the other day with Crystal, and um, one of the people who I've never seen before, by the way, some host I've never seen before, goes, you know, I like Trump, I'm a big fan of Trump, but, uh, you know, I don't know about that vaccine thing, man, and I'm not so sure about those $2,000 checks he sent out, that seems like a bad idea. <laughs> Come on, man. So two of the like, very few good things Trump did, two of the best things, they're like, I don't like that. I'm against positive things. Why doesn't he do more negative stuff? That would be better. <laughs> These people are unbelievable. And Candace, same thing. It's like, Trump is pro-vax because he's too old to understand the internet. Well, if that was true, that would be Trump being right and the internet being wrong. But anyway, 
got that information and believed it to be true. He thought that I said that he was too old and that he couldn't understand the internet and did not quite get the information that actually what I was saying was a defense of him so that his supporters would still believe in him. Not only was he just mad, by the way, he then, during a golf session with some mutual friends of ours, had a person next to him who was egging this on, saying to Trump, and I know this because, again, this is a mutual friend, aren't you mad at Candace? Aren't you mad at Candace? Aren't you mad at Candace? And eventually he was like, yeah, I'm so mad at Candace. I'm so mad at Candace. And this got back to me that he was upset with me, that he was angry at me. And the next time that I saw him, he was quite rude to me. He was actually (laughs) rude to me. (laughs) They all have such petty, fragile egos, you know? It's Everything's high school. Look, and I can tell you this too. I'm not saying that, like, you know, left-wing commentator circles are better. Because they're not. They're not. Everybody's, like, petty and fragile and... um reads too much into situations and shit talks behind other people's backs. And like, if you're just a normal person trying to be nice to people and just go about your business, you're like an outcast in a sense. (laughs) So it's so funny that Candace is like, he was rude to me. He was rude to me because when he was playing golf with some other elitist schmuck, he, he was prodded to dislike me and he didn't even, the headline wasn't even true. And I was actually defending Trump. (laughs) I'm telling you this personal story because I think it is something that made me for the first time question him as a person. So you have an individual that spent years defending you, right? (laughs) That was the thing. That was the thing that made her go, I don't know about this guy as a person, man. Did you know Trump's very first military action as president was to approve a raid Uh, And it was a raid that Obama didn't approve because he said the evidence is not there and it's too much of a risk. Let's not let's not do this. So Trump approved a raid. It was for some, you know, Al Qaeda guy or ISIS guy. And um, he ended up killing a young American girl in the raid. I'm blanking on her name now, but this was his very first military action as president. Approved a raid which killed a little girl. Now, I, by the way, I'm sure Candace Owens doesn't know this story, right? But even if she did, she almost certainly wouldn't be like, I, I started to question his character after that, man. You know, when he, uh, remember when he did, he woke up one day on like a random Tuesday and decided, we should assassinate a top Iranian commander and nearly spark World War III. Yeah, let's approve that one. You didn't have any pause then? And by the way, that uh, top Iranian commander, um... General Soleimani was on the ground fighting ISIS, and Trump killed him. You didn't have any, uh, you know, reservations when the Trump administration tried to do a coup on Venezuela. No reservations there. Or when they went after Julian Assange. There was no, like, I don't know about this guy, man. This doesn't seem right. This doesn't seem like a good idea. When his uh, number one legislative accomplishment was a massive tax cut for the rich. And you go, I don't know, it doesn't seem like he's really looking out for working class people. When he destroyed the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, which returned $12 billion to defrauded Americans, that didn't give you any pause? So, I don't know, man. This guy seems a little off. Seems like maybe he's not fighting for the working class. When 200,000 jobs were outsourced under his administration because of his policies, nothing, no pause there. So, he was rude to me. He was very mean. So I started to question his character. Wow. Wow. And that individual gave you a completely kind and fair interview. You said something yourself that your base didn't like, and you somehow transformed that into something that I did wrong. That's unacceptable. That is is not being a leader. That is not owning things that you did wrong. That is not owning that you misunderstood something about your base. That's not growing. That's not developing. In fact... Yeah, but Candace, on this issue of the vaccine... You are wrong, the base is wrong, and he is right. For all of the problems with the vaccine, it still does what it's supposed to do, which is stops severe illness, hospitalization, and death. Every graph I've ever seen on this, every chart shows people who are not vaccinated, massive spike in severe illness, hospitalization, and death, and people who are vaccinated, just the tiniest little tick up. So it still does the main thing it's supposed to do. So you are wrong and he is right. How do you factor that into the whole fucking breakdown you have here? Again, of all the things. Remember when Trump was running for president and he said, 
uh, talk, when he was talking about ISIS, we have to take out their families. We have to take out their families. So actively murder civilians on purpose? That's what we call terrorism. When he said that, you didn't go, I don't know about this guy, man. That seems extreme. When he said that um, we should do more torture and signed a pro-torture executive order, that didn't sound... Again, I can go on and on. Anyway, let's keep going. He should have tried to understand why the base was so upset with him, but, which would have led to the fact that his base is not pro-COVID vaccine. It's that yeah, because you guys have been brainwashed by propaganda that spreads virulently online in the dumbest circles. That's why. Simple. I understood that. I could have told him that. But at that moment, I realized that he's not listening. Who is this guy next to him trying to egg him on to be angry at me for trying to defend him? To say that he's not a shill. To say, no, actually, I think that he genuinely does support the vaccines. He did genuinely support the vaccines. So all of this going on made me, again, question him oh. if he was becoming too angry. Oh. Which is to say that when Trump... When he said, let's do a total and complete shutdown of Muslims coming into the U.S. That, that was not too angry. That wasn't too angry. But when he, he was rude to Candace, now you've gone too far, sir. Now you've gone too far. Trump went into the election in 2016. He was having fun, right? He was naming people, giving them fun names, enjoying the base, having a good time. I would even say in 2020, you could feel the energy. It was electric. I think after the 2020... In 2016, he was having fun, even though he was still a psycho. And he was a better candidate. In 2020, he was already a mess. Election, and because of the shock of all the things that happened, and the answers that we never really feel that we got, this, like, sinking realization that we might be actually losing our country, I think that it pushed him into an angry space where he doesn't trust anybody, where he doesn't listen to anybody, where he's... he's almost likely to believe that everybody's trying to turn their back on him and stab him in the back. Well, right now they are because he's a loser and he keeps losing and Republicans first and foremost want to win. So yeah, everybody's turned their back on him. And also he went all in on the lie that the election was stolen and that's super extreme. Americans don't accept that and it's not true and he's doing QAnon posting. So yeah, they're turning their back on him, but they should have done it like on day fucking one. It took them a re way too long a time to do it. But she's right about the anger thing. Like, yeah, now interpersonally he's more angry and um, he comes across as more angry in everything he says politically. Like, that that shit is definitely true. Um, but it's, again, it's funny that this is like the... His tone is a little off from what it used to be. It's nothing policy-wise other than I'm anti-vax and he's pro-vax. <laughs> and again, I don't believe that that's leadership, but I never spoke on that because I thought to myself, I, I think... That's a lot of ego that Trump is having right now. But oh, you don't say, oh, he's got an ego. It took you, what, five fucking years, six years to figure that shit out? <laughs> but maybe I'm being egotistical. Maybe me even speaking out about this is me being offended and butthurt that he was so rude to me. He was so rude to me on the basis of what he said. But after time, I've realized that, no, these discussions that everybody is having these conservative influencers are having behind Trump's back should be also had with the public as well. We have, you have a right to know that. You have a right to take that information and judge it as you will. And to question whether or not there has been a change in Trump. How could there not be? How could you suffer a defeat and know in your heart that a lot of things that happened regarding that defeat were wrong, even if you don't believe that what happened in Maricopa County during the election? was fishy. I do personally believe that. Of course you do. You at least believe that the Hunter Biden laptop suppression led to different results in the election. Of course it did. Many people no. They absolutely shouldn't have censored it because it was accurate information and, you know, we're supposed to have a free press in this country. You can't have social media companies censoring on at the behest of the government. That's insane, right? Um, but that wouldn't change the outcome. Biden ended up winning by what, like 7 million votes? That wouldn't have changed the outcome at all. People said that if they hadn't... That's massive conservative cope, by the way. You know that that laptop was real, they would have voted differently. So he has every right to be angry. But if you stay at a place of anger, right, you are ignoring everything that is going on around you. You're no longer looking and assessing things in the way that you should be assessing them because you're holding on to this almost vengeful spirit, right? 
That is the question that I have with Trump. Is he going to get over the trauma of the election of 2020 and begin to paint a vision for 2024? No, obviously not. What is his vision for 2024? He doesn't have one other than make me president again. I need it so badly. I have such a deep, dark void and hole in my heart. Is it I'm back? Because that's not a vision to me. It needs to be more than I'm back, right? And I think that what's happening behind closed doors, people believing that they're not sure who he's listening to, maybe there's a paranoia potentially that's setting setting in that he believes that his friends, now me, oh my God, how could you say I was too old? I read the headline on the Daily Beast. That's what she said. I didn't say that, right? If you thought I said that, you should have been a decent human being. You should have picked up the phone and you should have called me, right? Because that's what I- <laughs> Why didn't you call me, bro? We could have talked it out, bro. Sure, I'm some shitty fucking political commentator on the Daily Wire and you're president of the United States, but pfft, we could have worked this out one-on-one, -on -one, bro. Imagine the president with his, like, list of, of to-do shit. It's like, um, you know, talk to Kim Jong-un of North Korea, uh, negotiate new trade deal, call Candace Owens. <laughs> what, fucking, what the fuck? Unbelievable. Straight up high school shit. Straight up high school shit. Now, by the way, I think there's another reason, too, for this sort of shift, other than the fact that Trump's a loser and he keeps losing. Everybody at the Daily Wire surrounding Candace Owens is a, a DeSantis simp. So I think she's sort of like hopping on the bandwagon as well. And I'll, I'll tell my story about how Trump went too far. Oh, when he went too far, oh shit, was it the fact that he massively increased the drone war and killed like uh, giant numbers of civilians? Is that when he went too far? No, 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 it's not that. Was it uh, serving Wall Street faithfully for... His entire four years in office? Is that the thing that you... No, 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 it's not that. Was it him being slightly rude to you at a party? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I would have done. I would have reached out to you to clarify things. That's what it means to be a person. That what's, that's what it means to be a friend. That's what it means to be a colleague, not even a friend. What it means to be a colleague is to actually have relationships with people, to honor the relationships that you have with people that don't take place in the public sphere. We didn't do any of those things. And I think that the MAGA movement is reflecting Trump. I think there is a trepidation that I'm sensing in Trump. And I think that that trepidation is evidenced by him taking a random swing at DeSantis last week. I don't think it was helpful, even though DeSantis won Florida handily. He's not running against DeSantis right now, right? DeSantis is running for governor. I know Trump voted for him and all of that's great. Why take a random swing, right? I think- You know why. Because he fears DeSantis is going to run in 2024. Um, he wants to run in 2024. He's his biggest opponent in terms of the polls and in terms of, like, electability and viability. So that's why he did it. Don't play dumb. The base is feeling that trepidation. They're not sure who to listen to on endorsements. Do you listen to DeSantis? Do you listen to Trump? Or do we listen to these influencers? Are these influencers listening to DeSantis? Are these influencers listening to Trump? They're wondering about what the leadership looks like. And I think that I am not at all under any impression that Trump can't win in 2024. No. You should be. <laughs> There's no way he's going to win a general election. 1%. That's it. What I am saying is that Trump needs to take a good look in the mirror. And he needs to take a good look in the room. And he needs to read the room accurately. He needs to take a look at those that are around him that are inspiring this paranoia and making him believe that everyone's out to get him, including his friends. And he needs to exercise a tiny bit more humility when he gets something wrong. Trump is not perfect. I'm not perfect. I get things wrong. I edit. I say, thank you guys for bringing me this new information. I hadn't realized that. And there's still a period where he could transform. But I think the results of last night's election, which are still coming in, show that we aren't sure, that he's not sure, and therefore we aren't sure. And that's all I have to say about that. So the rats are fleeing the ship. Candace is a good example of one who's fleeing, like, a slowly, tiptoeing. Don't attack me, Daddy. Okay, but I'm a slowly monk. I love, she's lecturing him on humility. By the way, she's also one of the least um, humble people on the fucking planet. Um, but, yeah, imagine Trump is, what, 75, 76 years old, something like that. His whole life, he's been this massive, giant ego narcissist with a god complex. Imagine, like, Trump watches, he's like, you know what, she's right. <laughs> I gotta clean it up a little bit. Maybe I'm a little too rough around the edges, a little too self-centered. Maybe I should, you know, I'll reel it in a touch. Like, telling you, man, 
the shift is occurring, but it's just so funny. It's it's so funny to me that she didn't stop and think like, how is this going to be perceived, this segment that I'm doing? It's the most obvious thing in the world. Like, he did all these things which were fucking terrible. And her reason is, he was kind of a dick to me. So, I don't care if Bernie Sanders had slept with my mom. I'd have been like, look. Homeboy wants Medicare for all. What am I going to say? You know, he wants free college. He wants Medicare for all. He wants to raise the minimum wage. He wants to end the wars. What am I? I got to vote for him, right? He can tell me to go fuck myself with an iron rod. He could tell me to pour molten lava in my asshole. And I still would have supported him in the 2016 primary. Still would have supported him in the 2020 primary. Because that's how politics actually should function. What are the policies? What's your record? What are the policies? Let's get it. Uh, but that's not their, you know, weird little click. None of these, they don't give a fuck about any of the actual policy shit. They don't care. They just see loser now. Loser. Massive loser. And so now they come up with all their justifications and their reasons. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, it's Trump guy. Pff, I, don't know. I never really liked him anyway, bro. You know what I'm saying? We all see you. We all see you. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.